السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Thank you to all my speakers, to all the speakers that came before me. Uh, honestly, we all got inspired and learned so much. Did you know that there are more people today alive? Today on the 26th of January, there are more people alive than, than ever have died from the beginning of time. So from the time of Adam until today, all the people have died. There are more people alive now. That's a shocking fact. That's a fact that puts things in perspective. Where in the late 70s, or in the early 70s, a man was sitting on the floor with a couple of British consultants. Those consultants were telling this man that you, your city has a population of 30,000 people. 30,000 people living in your city, therefore you need a highway of one lane. One lane going and one lane coming. The city won't increase in population, maybe a 10% on a yearly basis, but you wouldn't need to expand. The man said, I would like four lanes. They're like, all right, you got the money to pay for it, we'll give you four lanes. Today that man has created a city and had a vision for this city. Sheikh Zayed, may Allah have mercy on his soul, had created a city that went from 30,000 people to over 3 million people today. A 10,000% increase in population that never happened anywhere. He told those British people that people will come and I know they're going to come. And they came. Today, the population of the youth in the Arab world are 100 million. 100 million people living in the Arab world. 32% or 30% of the youth in the United Arab Emirates are 30% uh, are youth in the United Arab Emirates. Therefore, the youth is the future. And our government focuses on the youth. We have the first youth minister. We have organizations and initiatives that support the youth and actually has the vision knowing that the youth are the future. But where is their future? Their future is in industry. Their future is in politics, in diplomacy, in government, and in startups. Now everybody can be a government employee, not everybody can be an engineer, not anybody can be an innovator in any way, but people can become leaders of their own and, and start startups. So, I spent seven years in the United States. I lived from the year of 2006 to the year of 2012, completely spent in the United States of America. And my mom said, it's time to come home or we're going to come get you. And I was like, okay, I'm coming back. But when I was there, I went to study. And I dropped out of school. I, dro I, was, I went to study aerospace engineering. And I was, this is not for me. And I went out into the US market before the recession hit and started my own startups. Started working on myself, worked odd jobs. I worked as a librarian. I worked as a night school teacher. I worked as a janitor in an old people home. I got the experience that humbled me and taught me that you only get what you put in. Now, based on, on this, there's a lot of studies that were made showing what is the factors that increase the success rate of a startup of a company, of somebody that wants to do change in this world. All what we've been hearing throughout these, uh, with all the amazing speakers here today, that we need to change the world, we need to do better, we need to empower ourselves, we need to be tolerant, we need to be that. But how? How can I give myself a chance to become more successful, more productive, and give back? In 1997, or in 1999, there was a company called Z.com. This company 
had the idea, the business model, they knew how they were going to make money, they had the funding, they had celebrities lined up outside their doors, what we call today influencers on social media, wanting to sign up to support this product. It was an online entertainment system. They had it all right. They were before everybody, before YouTube, before any other company. But they failed. In two years, 2000, they closed their doors. Yes, the dot-com boom happened, uh, the dot-com bubble burst, and there were failures in the market, but they failed, although they had everything planned out. Why? So based on that, when, when you wanted to download or watch, people actually watched TV more than they were on their computers. Bandwidth penetration, the amount of people that had internet in the United States was so low. In 2002, Adobe Flash was created. So people now can stream videos on their computer even faster. Bandwidth penetration reached 50% in the United States. So everybody had internet. And YouTube came on the scene. YouTube didn't have an idea. They didn't have a business model. They didn't have the money. They didn't know what they wanted to do. But now Google is worth over a billion dollars in the multis of billions of dollars. And what is the reason? So these are the five factors that allowed Google to become successful. The first factor is timing. If people are not ready for your product, if people don't care about your product, if people don't want your product, they don't need your product, it is the wrong timing. If people can't access your product, it is the wrong timing. So timing is the biggest success factor for any kind of startup. 42%, so when they looked at hundreds of startups, any startup that is existing today, they looked that this startup had a 20% higher chance to succeed due to the timing. Once it's time, you need to have the team, either yourself, knowing what you want to do, or have people around, around you capable enough to deliver and execute on the third factor, which is the idea. Everybody here will say, I got an idea. Everybody has ideas. Everybody has ideas. Everybody wants to, uh, wants to make a difference. Everybody wants to make an impact, yet ideas are not enough. If you don't have the two other factors before your idea, it won't work. You know, Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. So having a plan is not enough. Then comes the business model. Now you have that, you have, you're in the right time, you're in the right market. You have the team around you to build your product. You have the idea of what you want to do. The business model will come. You will put it in the market. You put an alpha version, a better version, whatever way you would actually access the market with having, being in having those three factors. You will know how to deliver your product to your customer, how are you going to sell it, how are you going to price it, etc. And financial backing is the last factor and the least important factor. In today's world, people think, if I want to do a change, I have to have money. If I want to make an impact, I have to have money. If I want to inspire, I have to have money. But if you have the idea, if, you, if you're in the right time, and the people around you believe that it is the right time, you'll get the finance. Finance is the easiest thing to get today. There are a lot of venture capitalists, angels, investors, government initiatives out there to support you to put your product out or to put your service out or whatever you want to do. Maybe it's an NGO to change the world. In 2014, I... 2013, I came back to the United Arab Emirates after being in Korea for several months. And when I was in Seoul, I got inspired by the coffee culture. I went in to all the major malls, Dubai Mall, Galeria Mall in Dubai, and I asked them, I would like a location to start a specialty coffee shop. And the people in charge of leasing were looking at me funny. It's like, what do you mean specialty coffee shop? We have Lavaza, we have Eli. 
no disrespect to commercial coffee, but I wanted to provide the market with a better quality product at an affordable price. They didn't believe in my idea, yet and it was the wrong timing. If I opened that back then in 2013, people would not get it. People are not into that culture of what we call today a Spanish latte. It doesn't make sense to them. It was the wrong timing. In 2016, late 2016, we observed the market again. It was the right timing and we went in. And today, Imarati Coffee is the largest specialty coffee roastery. Not coffee shop, roastery. Supplying over 90 coffee shops from Jordan, Beirut, Oman, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE, Seoul, within a span of a year. Why? Because we had the right time. People wanted the product. They're looking for it. We had the team to execute. We had the idea of what we wanted to provide, how to differentiate ourselves from any other coffee roastery. And we had the business model, putting ourselves in the shoes of the customer, applying empathy. Empathy is one of the most important factors in business. And people don't realize that because in empathy, you will be able to deliver a product that will connect to your customer, putting yourself in their shoes. And empathy is a major, major, major aspect of tolerance. So I would just like to end today with the summarizing the five factors. And I hope this would help you to increase your chances of becoming successful as a business person or as an entrepreneur what, what they call us today. And let's live today for a better tomorrow. Why do you